Hello everyone, this is week two of my video blog and this week's topic comes from Teresa. Uh, Teresa is working on a an afghan using the figure eight stitch in a rake style. She's actually using the super KB afghan loom. But her question was, how do you finish the afghan when done? How do you get it off the loom? I am done, I just don't know how to finish it and take it off. Okay Teresa, this is what you do. First of all, this one's going to be a little difficult just because of the size of the KB Afghan loom. You take your working yarn and wrap it around the loom three times. But doing that with yours, you'll actually end up, you'll probably still run out of some yarn. But as you see, I already did that with this one. So, um, before I get started, if you do run out of yarn when you're doing a cast off, just any cast off, what you do is, let's say right here is the end. And... Here is our, our new piece. What you want to do is you want to leave a tail, I'd say at least four or five inches long, if not longer, and you run both pieces together as one strand of yarn, and you do at least three stitches, if not more, using both as one, and then of course you will leave a tail, your end that you know, the end that is on the, the working yarn and then your new yarn, there'll be two strings coming off and you just take your crochet hook and weave it all in and uh, nobody will ever be able to tell that you had to add more string and typically little projects like this you can pull out enough yarn to where you don't but sometimes with your larger projects like your afghans and big blankets and such it's very difficult and just very bothersome because the tension of constantly pulling the string through the loops on the pegs, um, it is, uh, it'll, I've noticed that sometimes it'll cause the yarn to shred a bit, especially if you're using more of the stuff that's not woven together quite as tight. And then if it shreds and breaks off, this is a way to fix it. But like I said, you want to run them together at least three stitches, which what that means is at least three pegs. You want to run both of those strands together and you do that, that concept goes with anything that you are knitting. Okay, so let's get started here. As you can see, oh, this peg back here is where my last stitch was. So, as you can see, this stitch, it's a figure eight, so it's kind of a zigzag look. Try to hold this up. Let me move the rest of this out back. There you go. You can see it better. It's kind of a zigzag look. So, typically with your cast-offs, you will go like this. With this, you don't want to do that. You're going to follow the way your stitches go and if you have if you're making a blanket with a different stitch in a rake pattern follow the same directions just remember you follow the way you've stitched or the way you've knitted okay so peg one let's go to peg two I'm gonna try to get this to where you're gonna okay you're putting your needle down through the top and you're pulling the string up through and I'm trying to do this to where you can see everything clearly so you just put the needle down through the top and pull the string up through that's step one now you go back one peg and instead of pulling it up you do it opposite that helps to lock it in so there we go we are going up under and we are pulling the working yarn down first part is done so we will never go back to that peg again now we're going to skip a peg and go over actually sorry we're going to skip a peg we're going to go to the next working peg which in the figure eight stitch it's going to be kind of odd but we're going to curl around we're going to follow that shape and go up to this next zigzag and again Sorry, this is getting in my way. And again, we go down through the top of the stitch and pull the yarn up through. We go back one. And you're going to notice there's going to be two stitches on this one, and that is perfectly fine. That's how it's supposed to be. Go up through the bottom and pull it down. Now that peg is done, and we're going to be moving on to the next. Oops, sorry. So again, we're going to wrap around that one because that's the next in the row. And then, of course, you go down. And for this one, 
Again, this is going down through the top, pulling up through the bottom, Oops. and pulling it all through. Then we go back one, and we go through the bottom, and pull the yarn down. Again, this one is done. So we go, we're going to skip one, which that puts, that's what puts the two loops on it, is wrapping around that one and then going to the next, which again, we are doing a figure eight, so we're going diagonal again. All right, so this one is needle through the top, pull the yarn up through the bottom. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm uh, trying a new angle with my camera, so this should make it a lot better once I get used to using it this way. Okay, so we did that one. Now this one, we go up through the bottom, pull the yarn down, and you just keep repeating this pattern until you're at the very last stitch, which I'm gonna keep going and doing all of this um, while the video is going. So if you want, if you've kind of got the idea of it and you just wanna see how to, uh, what to do with that very last strand, you can kind of fast forward at this point. And if you accidentally do the, the stitch the wrong way, if you pull it, oops, if you pull it from the bottom instead of pulling it from the top, it really isn't gonna make a big difference. You're not gonna notice it. Um, if you did it all the way through, I'm really not sure what it would do. Um, it may make a little difference in the tension. I think you do the way you do it the way it shows, uh, just to help lock them in. Which this cast off, especially, which Teresa, when you're doing this on a huge loom like you're going to be doing, it's going to take a while. And when you go to sit it down, you just got to remember what I always do if I have to sit my loom down and go do something which I have kids so that's very and animals so that's a very common thing that happens in this household is that I have to sit it down go deal with something and come back to it I just make sure that I um, always end on the same stitch so I always end on that second stitch where it pulls down through the bottom like I just did that takes the two loops off the peg that way I know where I'm at and then I can just pick it up and I just got to remember which direction I'm coming from and uh, which if you forget that you can look you can see there is a difference in the way the stitches look because these ones still have the knot there where that last stitch has been pulled over uh, these ones do not so that's how you can tell that all right um, which actually what I am making here this is actually going to be a neck warmer. When I'm done with it, I'll just put a little toggle on it. I just wanted to knit up something uh, real quick to give you an idea of uh, how to do this. And I don't like to just knit up little swatches and then show you how to do the cast off because then I've just wasted yarn. So it's if I do a whole project to show you how to do something and at least I am accomplishing a little bit more that way. Oops. Okay. Okay, so pull that one down. Oops. And we're still going over. Which the only, now if you watch my video that has, I think it's like 25 some plus some um, cast, oh, oh, 25 plus different rake stitches some of these stitches are going to be very very hard to cast off uh, just because they are just all over the place and it's I have trouble even remembering what the pattern is for those stitches so for situations like that um, good luck <laughs> sorry that's really all the advice I have. Well, you don't have to use the super stretchy cast off. There are different cast offs that you can use. Um, uh, most people, when they first start loom knitting, you learn the sewn cast off, I think is really what in loom knitting, what it's called. It's where you cut your string and you run it through each loop two times. 
which if you choose to do that one, any of the cast offs you can do on any style, uh, they all give you a different appearance and a different look. The only thing is you just got to follow the way your stitches go. That's the rule for all of it. And I've had so many people ask me how to do the cast offs for these different rake stitches and that was really the only way I knew to explain it is well you just do the regular cast off but you follow the stitches and I think I was confusing a lot of people with that because it's one of those things that is easier to see and do than to be told how to do. Uh, that's actually one reason why I prefer anytime I'm looking for a new stitch or a new idea I always check YouTube first because some of these patterns trying to read them can be so confusing and I've even noticed in I have a lot of loom knitting books and I've even noticed in some of my books that they contradict each other they will call stitches by different names and and you know it just really confuses you whether you're supposed to be doing an e-wrap or the the knit stitch or the flat stitch you know because they give some of these the same names for different I don't know in different books for different reasons I suppose and again if you are a needle knitter and you move over to loom knitting it confuses you as well because not all these stitches have the same names when they cross over um, trying to think of some examples well like the figure eight stitch like if you use it for in the flat like doing hats and stuff there's a completely there's two different stitches in loom knitting that is called a figure eight stitch and both of them they are named because you are doing a figure eight shape while you make it and that's not what they're actually called in loom knitting in needle knitting I mean okay so we have we're at our last two pegs so again you skip the one pull up from the bottom oh I hope my camera will adjust the shakiness of this <laughs> okay and you go back to your previous one with the two looms I mean the two loops pull down from the top and then you go back to your that very end peg one more time you can pull it up from the bottom pull it down from the top I prefer to pull it down from the top because then you got the string oops okay sorry it doesn't matter which way you pull it through but I prefer to pull it down from the top because then the string is already facing down when you go to stitch it in okay so this is what it looks like on the loom when you're completely done with the super stretchy cast off for the figure eight stitch in a rake style so we've got it all done what we do now is we just take knitting needle our crochet our knitting hook sorry which some of these might be a little tight and that is fine it all loosens up when you get done with it we take and get all of those off there and at first it's going to look kind of loopy you did not mess it up you did nothing wrong you stretch it out and it will all blend in perfectly let me stretch this a bit more so you stretch it and then it'll blend in and this looks almost identical to the other end which you can see some of these are a little looser than others but just stretching it like that will even up the tension which that was actually my fault with the tension so there you go now uh, I'll go ahead and show how to weave in see where I put it down it's aimed, it's aimed down this way instead of up and it leaves less of a, a noticeable knot which I never did weave in my other end either but I'm not going to weave that end in quite yet because I'm actually going to work it kind of through my yarn up to about here and add a toggle to it to make an ear warmer not ear warmer well you can use it as an ear warmer but a neck warmer okay so all you do if you've never really worked your ends in which that you don't need to create a knot or anything because that's already locked in there you just take a crochet hook and you just move it through some of these stitches you can go under over you just move it all around and you don't want to go just in one row you don't want the end to be along one of the edges it's more noticeable 
so you just kind of move it over and up to where it's going to end like in here somewhere and that way it's not as noticeable and one thing i have yet to really uh, find an answer to is how to get the ends not to show at all uh, if you're using just one strand of yarn this one actually has like two strands kind of woven together one thing you could do is weave it in so far let me see if this will let me do it and then kind of separate them a bit you see you just kind of separate them a bit and let's say it's woven completely into here and you weave this one through a few stitches weave this one through in through a few stitches to where they are coming out um, stitches right beside each other and then you can do a box knot and you can do the knot really really tight and just snip it right at the knot itself and that knot's going to blend in but one thing you want to do is before you tie it you want to take and stretch this every which way you can think of so that all that yarn is going to blend in and you won't have a tight spot in it okay everybody so i really really hope that this helped and um Again, this is week two of my video blog for week three. Uh, just leave comments below. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. I am all over the place. Just leave comments and questions and let me know what you would like to see for week three. Again, Teresa, thank you for the request. Uh, that was actually a video I really needed to do. Um, it's been a while and I haven't, I've had so many requests and just so many um I, I've got a lot going on, so it's been really hard for me to sit down and really do videos. So this is my way to kind of keep up with it and um, get to all of those requests that I get. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave comments below and ask questions. And obviously subscribe, like, share. Again, thank you.